Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, August 6th. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining with us again this week. I've got some really good news to share, and some of you, if you've been paying attention to the news here in Massachusetts over the past few days, uh, you may have already picked up on this. But the success of our pension systems here in Massachusetts made headline news this week um, with the announcement from the state's PRIM board the Pension Reserves Investment Management Board, which manages the PRIT Fund. And I know here I go with all these crazy acronyms. Um, the PRIT Fund is the Pension Reserves Investment Trust, PRIT, which is the common <laughs> acronym used for it. But over the past fiscal year, so from July 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021, the PRIT Fund returned a, an investment return of 29.5%. You heard it right, 29.5% for the fiscal year. That's an asset gain of over 22 billion, billion with a B, dollars that have, has been added to the total value of the PRIT fund. Now, PRIT makes up the state and teachers' retirement systems along with the bulk of the 104 local retirement systems. I believe that in total, uh, out of the 102 local retirement systems, I should say, out of the 102 local systems, nearly 90 have all or some of their local pension monies invested through the state system. And there's a var variety of reasons for that. The, the state, because of the, the size of the fund, um, can get access to certain investments like private equity and some real estate deals and so forth that the smaller systems have a little bit more of a difficulty accessing that. And that, that's completely typical. But the total value of the PRIT fund as of June 30th was over $95 billion. So by the time we get into the fall, by the time we get into probably mid-September, knock on wood, if the economy continues to rebound and these really strong investment returns that we've been seeing this year continue, most likely PRIT will exceed $100 billion in value for the very first time. Now, this is extremely impressive. This is really good news for public retirees, public employees, as well as the taxpayers, because everybody you know, has some, some skin in the game, as they say, when it comes to your public pension. Now, most importantly for you as a public retiree, you know that as a public employee, you did not participate in Social Security. So even if you are able to qualify for a Social Security benefit, it is greatly reduced because of the fact of you didn't pay in as a public employee, and you have the windfall elimination provision and the government pension offset to contend with as a retiree. So your entire retirement benefit by and large is, is coming from our public retirement systems here in Massachusetts. So the success of these systems it makes it that much more important. And the success that we're seeing isn't just related to the past year or the past three years or the past five years or the past 10 years. If you go all the way back to the mid 1980s when the modern pension funding schedules were set up, so 36 years ago, and you look at the success over that period of time on an annualized basis, nearly every single one of our systems has exceeded 9% annualized returns for the last 36 years. All of our systems, with no exception whatsoever, have far exceeded their assumption of what they expected and needed to earn in order to fully fund the system um, by the date that their funding schedule calls for. So this is really good news. You can look to the next edition of our newsletter, the September edition of The Voice, which is at the printer right now. That newsletter will be mailed to you next week. So about a week from now, it should start to appear in, in your mailboxes. Why I'm noting this is that we have some really good and useful and important information relative to the success of our public retirement systems. We publish um, for three full pages in the, in the next newsletter, all of the returns of our retirement systems on a one year basis, three year, five year, 10 year, and since inception, which is over a 36 year period. We also publish what the COLA base level is for each of these systems. We wanna give the full context of that all of these systems have been tremendously successful. And in our opinion, that success now needs to be shared with you, the beneficiaries and the retirees who are dependent on these retirement systems. And there's a lot of credit to go around. Everybody should be very proud of what we've achieved over the past 36 years. And right now, I wanna say you know, a special thank you 
to our good friend and, and my good friend, Deb Goldberg, our state treasurer and receiver general and, and well known to all of you. Deb is the chairwoman of the PRIT fund, of the PRIM board. She is the one that's ultimately responsible as the chair of that system for its success. And since taking office um, seven years ago, she has done a tremendous job of, you know, being at the helm of that ship, working side by side with Michael Trotsky, who you know was our guest speaker back in June for our Teletown Hall event. Michael, of course, is the executive director and chief investment officer for Prim. He and his team at Prim have done a fantastic job on your behalf, and we have seen you know asset growth um, without comparison during Michael's tenure down there and, and, and dur during Treasurer Goldberg's tenure. And everybody combined has done a very good job. And it's important that we give credit where it's due because the, in years past, um, especially decades ago, these issues were not taken as seriously as they should have been. And by the mid 1980s, we were really behind the eight ball in terms of properly funding our retirement systems. You know, the money had been taken out of your checks as the employees and you made your contribution to the retirement system. But in most cases across Massachusetts, including at the state level, the government as the employer fell short in terms of what they were supposed to have been doing all those years. And again, that changed in the mid-1980s when modern pension funding schedules came to be, but we've had a lot of ground to make up ever since. And we've done a really, really good job since then. But as you'll see in the newsletter, and I wanna make it clear today, our focus now going forward is to one, acknowledge this success, but most importantly, make the case that this success needs to be shared. It can't just be a, a one-way street where the government takes these proceeds and, and pats themselves on the back and then moves on and shifts that funding o over to something else. That's not right. That's not the way this should operate. You need to share in the success along with everyone else. And um, we don't think that that's asking for too much. So keep an eye on your mailbox. The newsletter is coming. You're going to hear us talking a lot more about this in the coming weeks and months and into uh, FY23. But I really wanted to kick things off today with, with this fantastic news from Prim of just how well things have been going down there. Now, on a side note, I know many of you have been following the situation with the state budget um, in regard to the post-retirement work hours that a retiree is allowed to work in a government job here in Massachusetts. You should know by now that we have been working to increase um, the limit of hours that someone can work over the course of a calendar year from the current 960 hours to a new level of 1200 hours. And we've had a long-standing disagreement with Governor Baker on this issue. Unfortunately, the governor has chosen once again uh, to veto this language in the FY22 budget. That veto was sent back to the legislature earlier this week. And I am happy to report that yesterday, the House of Representatives placed that veto on their calendar to be taken up in the early fall when the legislature comes back into session after the August recess. So it's our hope and um, our belief that the veto of the hours will be taken up by the House and then the Senate, hopefully in September or sometime in the early fall. And, and then those hours will increase to the new level of 1200. I also know that some of you have been asking the question about what about the earnings and, and can we increase the allowable earnings? Well, at this point in time, um, unfortunately, the answer to that is, is no. The earnings are set at what they're set at. You can make the difference between your public pension and what your former job currently pays plus an additional $15,000. That additional $15,000 was just increased in 2014 and it took effect in 2015 so just six years ago and it, it is a little bit premature to get the legislature to take that issue back up um, so soon after they had increased it um, it was increased after decades of, of being at the previous level um, so it's just not going to be the right timing to bring that back up but like everything else over time things need to be re-examined and looked at it again we do anticipate that somewhere down the road that will be the case in terms of the allowable earnings and it will be revisited at that time. But for now, the focus is just gonna be on the hours. So with that, I'm gonna sign off for today. Keep an eye on your mailbox. Uh, the next newsletter will be to you sometime next week. Um, if you have any questions after reading the newsletter or watching these videos or getting the email blasts, reach out to us. We're always happy to talk to you and answer your questions. In the meantime, 
continue to enjoy um, what we have for summer here. And um, we'll be back to you again real soon. Bye-bye.